let's now look into some of the conclusions which we have drawn from uh, studying femini feminism and critical discourse analysis. In an example which was based on uh, on some uh, sexual assault case in in Delhi, we we can draw two larger lessons. Number one, that uh, while studying such cases, uh, any cases about uh, feminist critical discourse analysis or the cases about sexual assault on women and discourses about it, discourses about women empowerment, we should not restrict ourselves to a certain cultural approach. Rather, we should look at such cases from a transnational lens and uh, which probably would equip, equip us in a better way to understand the overall phenomena and the underlying ideologies and most of these ideologies are not culture specific rather uh, they go beyond one culture and they, they may be present in all cultures in one shape or the other so uh, this case could be seen as an instance of cursor power uh, nor the discourse surrounding it was uniquely shocking. Though this was an, a, a glaring example of uh, discriminating gender powers, relations and shows a worst form of male dominance in a society where the crime was acted so shamelessly uh, on one side and then it was defended by some people or the same people also uh, even with more shamelessly. So we, we can see that this, this can be a case of uh, sheer coercive uh, power, use of coercive power in, uh, in a discriminatory manner. Uh, but the discourse surrounding this incident was not unique, was not shocking, didn't match uh, to, to the level of, uh, uh, to the level of I mean, shocking nature of this incident. So it was termed and discussed in a routine matter in which a certain woman is assaulted by another man. And then uh, the discourse of violence in this case, however, presented a cr critical discourse moment according to Chilton. And this is exactly critical discourse moment is the moment which is ideal for analyzing uh, a discourse critically, which makes it a social issue. So critical discourse moment implies that this moment is useful, is an ideal case for analyzing it from a critical discourse studies perspective. And we should employ all available resources to understand it, to analyze it and then give suggestions for a broader, better uh, and uh, improved social structure. The second lesson which extends from the analysis is about uh, uh, dominance and about constellation of power dynamics at work in, in any given situation. Uh, this might be theorized in terms of orders of power then, then into, into, the, uh, into typical male, female or gender relations. Rather, these, this is largely based on the relations or orders of power in a society. At one level, the discourse of daily rape uh, could be described as pre-feminist in the sense that there were some naive explanations of, about it which were completely ob oblivious of contemporary feminist uh, uh, principles of gender equality and justice and it was assumed that women should not act in a certain way or should not act in another way. Uh, all these discourses, they should not come out of their homes after evening, were based on, uh, on uh, some kind of ignorance of uh, contemporary feminists. Uh, movements. Uh, and then a at another level, uh, the discourse carried reactionary movements and elements of backlash, which brought out uh, many people to, uh, to, to protest against this crime, resenting and res resisting social changing in, uh, changes in favor of liberalization of gender and relations. So, so we, we found some reactionary elements of backlash also. So, which, which were against uh, uh, not accepting new changes, new roles women are assuming, uh, new rights they are claiming. Uh, then, uh, as seen, the discourse of sexual violence surrounding her actions served actively to reinscribe traditional cultural restrictions on female conduct and mobility. That's another lesson. And this is still a reality in many, many societies, uh, societies which may be 
uh, analyzed from multiple perspectives in, in the domain of critical discourse studies. At the same time, the Delhi rape incident was notable for the protesters that ensued, uh, protests that ensued on an unprecedented scale in, in, in the aftermath. Uh, there, was, uh, there were protests uh, both in India and outside India, I guess, and there were a huge media coverage to this case. And based on this, Roy in 2013 uh, commented at a time when globally young women are self-identifying as post-feminist, they are not interested in feminist politics as they think this is not relevant to them. The gal galvanizing of masses of young women over rape should be viewed as nothing short of tra transformatory. This could be seen as some kind of change in the society where women are coming out uh, to support and protect other women. Uh, and there were huge numbers of uh, women appearing in public protest against this crime. And according to Roy, this shows some kind of transformation. So, in future, as it has already been done, it can be suggested that uh, studies on uh, feminism, feminism or feminist discourse or studies related to women problems in a society, female, uh, the problems of women in a society can be, uh, can not only base themselves on the problems themselves uh, or the oppressive as, uh, uh, or the oppression they have to go through, rather they can focus also on the transformation which is happening in various societies. The kind of empowerment which may be structural, given by laws, or which may be self-acclaimed or self-realized, uh, rationalized, actualized uh, freedom women have sought because of their uh, education in various societies of the world, that can also be, be a subject of uh, critical discourse studies. So, it may, uh, may be su suggested as a result that both uh, oppressive as well as transformatory aspect of feminist discourse may be analyzed in critical discourse studies.